we've got a coyote up there right by that uh, pile of brush. Listen, there's a coyote right near you in the field.
cutting the field at the opposite angle uh, today versus all the times I've done it in the past. Um, I've got these, as you can see, the contour of the land goes downhill right here. And I've got these two um, eroded uh, trenches that go down through there. Normally, I cut across on the upper end and then when I get down this far, I start cutting up and down this way. And I thought, well, maybe it would be better to just cut side to side instead of lengthways on the property this time. But what I can tell you is there's a whole lot more uh, maneuvering, a lot more turning, because these are shorter distances versus going the length of the property. However, um, I am knocking that part out and I'm not going to have to, uh, I guess, change direction later. But I'm starting to realize that I kind of like it the old way better because uh, by the time I get to the point where I'm going to change direction, I'm actually up for a change anyway. But uh, another thing that's going on with this year's first cut compared to the last two years um, is that I'm noticing that um, it's a lot more bumpy. I have a much more bumpy ride going on than before. And uh, I think what caused that was uh, at the end of the first summer that I cut, I waited until everything got a little tall. And when I cut it, I actually left behind quite a few kind of piles. You know, it kind of left trails of dead grass that I had cut. And uh, I think that grass laid on this field and killed off a lot of the good grass. I think because of that, we ended up with more weeds last year. And I think because of that, uh, over the course of the last couple of winters, we've now experienced a little bit more erosion than we would have had I not done that. So, um, let that be a lesson to me to uh, not let the build get long. Now, obviously this time when we're cutting, if you can look over there, you can tell that this field was just not long this time. I mean, this is just, again, this is mid-April. I'm not cut there yet. So it's uh, it's not long, but what I'm wanting to do is on this first cut, especially I was wanting to get it cut while it's nice and close and cut it pretty short so that I prevent, hopefully prevent as much many weeds from uh, growing as possible and promote the growth of grass. If you can get those weeds down before they start getting too thick and especially before they go to seed, um, that's a great thing and it helps the grass kind of strengthen up and uh, take over. So I hope that for the first three cuts that I can stay on top of this and I can cut it before it gets much longer than this each of the first three times. So. Uh, We'll see if that works out or not. But yeah, you can see we've got this red, reddish uh, weed. I don't know what that is. If anybody knows what that is, you see that red right there in front of us here. Sorry, we're bouncing all over the place and the sound is probably not the best. But yeah, look at that beautiful red weed there. I'm not sure what we got there, but we want it down. It's pretty. It looks more red when you're at a distance from it. When you get up close, it looks a little bit more brown. And, and I'm colorblind. It still might look real red to you guys. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we've been going since, uh, let's see, since about quarter after 12. And it's 2 o'clock. So I'm, I'm going on two hours of uh, continuous cutting. And we've probably got a good four and a half, five hours ahead of us. So I'll check back in in a little bit and let you see our progress. Um, and uh, I did get in touch with my neighbor and we are a go for tomorrow to cut his tall field so that's going to be on here as well and that's going to be interesting we're going to see some real we're going to see a big change from where it's at now to where it's going so stick with me and if you kind of like this kind of content if this interests you I'd love it if you would consider hitting the like button for us. It'll help us show up and let other people see this who are searching for this kind of stuff. 
and uh, we're building a homestead up here. We bought a total now of 60 acres, and um, like I said, about 20 of its fields. We're going to eventually get this all fenced up and get some animals in here. Not 100% sure if we're gonna go with some cattle or some sheep, maybe some goats. Definitely would like some chickens. At a minimum, I want a bunch of laying hens so that we can keep eggs and get eggs. We've got to become self-sufficient, everybody. This is vital for us to uh, make sure that we're not depending and dependent on anyone else or the government to uh, take care of us. So if we can take care of ourselves with our own meat, our own eggs, our own dairy would be phenomenal. I'd love to get a couple of milk cows one day. And um, absolutely a huge garden that's going to go in right up there near where we got the, the pole barn slash tiny house. We're in the process of finishing out that tiny house. So if you've not been around here before at the lovely place, welcome. We're glad you're here and hope that you'll continue to come back and be a part of uh, our journey as we uh, turn this into a place that uh, is self-sufficient and fully off-grid. Speaking of off-grid, we've got solar panels already purchased with all of our batteries and our inverters. That will be going in before too long, hopefully. And uh, one day we hope to build a house up there on the edge of the woods. All right, I'm still going at it. I am uh, another, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes into this. And after a while, you start getting a little sleepy doing this. That lower back's been hurting a little bit. I pulled it, I guess, when I was up there dealing with the greasy and using the grease gun and checking the uh, the gearbox. But uh, it's starting to wear me down a little bit, but things are looking good when you look out that way. You can see it's coming together. What I've got though is I'm cutting it in sections so that I don't have to go very far to get to my next group. So it's uh, like right here in front of us, you can see what we're cutting here. This strip right here, and then there's a strip over there, and there's a strip and a strip. And so I just cut down the middle, and that way I can just scoot over to the next one and cut down it. But they don't always end up in straight lines. And the reason for that is the contour of the ground. I had to cut around those uh, trenches that I was telling you about where we've had a lot of erosion. And those trenches were there when we bought the property. So it's something that I actually found it the hard way. First time I drove my pickup truck through this field, the grass was real high. Well, it was more weeds and uh, corn stalks than anything. There was a cornfield here just before we bought this property the season prior. And the corn stalks was about a foot high where they'd cut them down. And I was going through there and I hit that trench over that direction with my nose down of the pickup truck and I'm, I'm lucky I didn't mess the truck up because I hit hard and I came to a very quick stop. You can see how we're circling back up and I'm going to cut around here. I'm going to go back up this line. And I try to do it evenly so that I can be in one particular area of the field before I have to cut over to the other side and continue doing the same thing over there. So we've got one, two, three stripes here and about the same over there. So it, it's coming right along. We're at 540, 550. It just bounces back and forth depending on if I'm going uphill or downhill. Getting down to about a quarter of a tank of diesel fuel. And we're at about 2,000 RPMs here. Uh, everything's looking good. That just shows that the PTO is engaged. This is the PTO manual lever here. Here's your throttle. This is for your three-point hitch. This raises and lowers the uh, actual entire Rhino and the green one. That remote raises and lowers raises and lowers the uh, the wings on it. We got piles all over the place where we've taken smaller trees and medium-sized trees out of the out of the woods up there when we were building the driveway. And same thing up there. 
when we were building the uh, or pulling all those trees out so we could have room for the barn and uh, we got some down yonder where we did the driveway but I've got a gravel now and uh, I'm hoping that I'll be able to get a lot of that cleared out I was really wanting to do it over the winter so we didn't have all the weeds and everything growing up around it but we didn't get it all done we didn't get to it so uh, we just take it as you know as much as we can do as quick as we can do it but slow and steady wins the race that's what we're going to keep doing
edge of this little pile and then we're going to head over and get the other side of the driveway and keep on the trucking. So we're going to go ahead and top this thing off with some diesel fuel and make sure we've got enough to get everything done the rest of the evening and then a good start tomorrow and then i can also this evening or first thing in the morning before i get here i can fill these jugs back up with diesel so we'll have plenty for tomorrow so let's get this going that one. About it for that one. We got one more jug. Let's see how much of it we can put in there. Not a drop spill this way. get in there. I'd say it's full. I can hear it topping it off. All right. Back to the truck. Let's start the truck.
I got the field on the other side of the tree line done. Now we're just doing this one. Then we got to hit the other side of the driveway and on on down that way. But it's it's turning out to actually be good timing. Uh, I took about an hour break and came back and now uh, just knocking this last part out. And then we're gonna get back here in the morning, finish things up here, and start on the neighbor's field. And uh, it's gonna be a another beautiful day tomorrow. The sun is just shining and it's gorgeous. It's perfect temperature and it's perfect inside here. So couldn't ask for any more. It's definitely a lovely day. Getting a lot done. Look out there. Look how pretty that is. I'm going to cut down the center of this field and that way I can start going back and forth hitting each side of this okay so I just jumped off the tractor to uh, because I noticed an issue and it's something we were talking about a little earlier you remember the uh, little clamp that held that uh, little I guess that barrel kind of deal on right there well that clamp came loose luckily it didn't tear anything up so I put a bungee cord on there holding that to that bar shaft this spinning I've got it going I've only got a little bit more to mow just that strip right there on the side of the field and uh, I'm done for the day I'll do the driveway tomorrow when I go down you can see all that tall stuff way down there at the top of the hill down the hill uh, it goes that whole field over there that's that's the neighbors and I'm gonna be doing that tomorrow it's gonna be right now or next on this video but uh, yeah I'll have to get that fixed up uh, when I get back up to the, the barn and it'll be good to go for tomorrow. So that thing came back to bite us, but we're okay. It didn't hurt anything. Thank goodness. Hey, lovely people. So we're back at it. It's day two. And I just wanted to show you before I get started down there. Uh, and you can see in the distance, the field, I'll show you when we get down that way. I just wanted to show you what we did yesterday, how it turned out. Not bad. Haven't done it on the side of the driveway yet, but yeah, you can, if you look down here, you can see how close we're cutting. That's not, that's not too, that's not too bad. That's probably what, three inches off the ground, probably maybe four in areas. I don't know if you noticed, but yesterday you see a lot of dust blow up there are ant hills. There have been ant hills all over the property here. Never seen them before until this this spring. But yeah, we were knocking them for a loop. Anyway, looks good up there. We're gonna go up there and fill up the tractor with some more diesel. And actually, it's pretty. It's probably got three quarters of a tank. So, but I got I added some to the jugs this morning, and we're gonna get started. So. I'll show you what we're about to do. Okay, this is it. This is the field we are about to cut. And you can see, check it out. This stuff comes up to right here on me. Now a lot of it's laying over a little bit and it's kind of thin underneath all this tall stuff. So it shouldn't be too difficult. But from what I understand, we've got, I don't know, around 10 to 15 acres. I, I, I don't remember exactly now. I measured it at one point and priced it out for him but uh, he came by took care of it and we're about to get rolling now uh, I'm projecting this might take about I don't know now that I look at it maybe five hours I'm gonna go slow because I don't really know what's down underneath there uh, we got the 15 foot bat wing of course so it won't take too long check it out look how close we got to our survey stick if you uh, tuned into one of the previous videos you see where we added two acres of land in the back and then we had the guys resurvey this stretch on each side of the driveway so we can put us a nice fence line up and down through here but uh, we're gonna get rolling you're gonna see some cool footage I'm gonna hook you to the back of the tractor right here's where we're hooking you up and you'll be able to see this stuff get taken down and 
see what it looks like. So enjoy the music.
This is what we've cut so far. We've come down the middle. I'll get, let you out here so you can see a little bit better out of this dirty ground. We are, uh, I brought you inside because I wasn't sure if it was still recording and uh, the camera's hot. So I'm not sure how much of that you got, but I'm gonna keep you in here with me with this AC cranked up, shut this window and we will cool you down right now. But this is going good. Uh, it's uh, 1150, almost noon. So I've been going about an hour and a half and we're trucking right along. So this is, uh, this is a good job. I would like about two of these a day forever. And uh, that'd be pretty nice. I also wanted to tell you uh, something that I've learned a lot since I started this whole uh, experience. You see, I'd never owned a tractor before, a cutter, never bush hogged a field. I, I rode a riding lawn mower, you know, or pushed a mower. That was it. I've, I've experienced a lot of new things. And if you look back at some of our previous videos, uh, you'll see a guy who started off absolutely knowing nothing, and I'm still learning. I still got a lot to learn. But one thing that I have learned, and one thing that I can pass along to you guys who have commented and told me the right way to do something, and the gentleman who came out to do a little service on a tractor explained this as well. And that is, when you are engaging this PTO right here, or any PTO, you don't want this throttled all the way up to 540 uh, RPMs at the uh, PTO, uh, which is about 2,000 RPMs here on the motor. So what uh, you need to do is you need to engage the throttle a little bit, get it around this area. I use normally use two hands, but in this case, I'm just gonna pop this up and jump over here with this hand and I'll feather it up. So. I'm going to turn the AC off so you can hear a little bit better, but here comes the PTO. And now it's only 1500 RPMs here, and I'm going to take it on up to a 2000. You can see that we're at 460, we're going to go on up to 540. Crank this AC back up because it's getting warm quick. 520, 530, 540. So you gotta get it in that sweet spot best you can. It vibrates a lot when it first begins. But uh, yeah, we are now we are now cutting. So let's continue on. We got her in low uh, second gear and up here we got it in second as well on the high gear. So let's continue on.
look close, right on the edge where I cut, you can see two stakes that's, on, that's in the ground. The gentleman that I'm cutting for, he has had a, uh, a perk test and they staked off where the house is going to be. So he asked me to try to avoid those. Luckily, I, I missed those two. I'm hoping I didn't run over the other two on the other side. After this is over I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you this field completely cut and we'll see how how much it improved and how good it looks so hang in there with me
make a change I'm gonna move away and change my name I said the world in a tangle What's going on? I'm going to a foreign land As jolly as you can be I bet you'll get the blues When you turn on the TV Cause the world's in a tangle Oh, what's going on? I'm going to a foreign land And make it my home Let me hear that mandolin a while Children are out here walking around playing. He's right there. He's walking, walking up the line. My uh, neighbor, of course, is right up there. I'm gonna have to call her because he's actually walking right toward her. There's something not right about that coyote, guys. He just walked into the wood line. Let me call her real quick. He is standing right there. Okay. Let's let's contact her. Call her right now. Listen, there's a coyote right near you in the field. 
he's 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 acting crazy because I've never seen a coyote just he's walking towards you. Are you inside your fenced area? Yeah, but let me call. Okay, you better get inside your fenced area. He's just on the other side of the hill. Uh, okay. From you behind that dirt mound. That dirt mound's got those weeds on it. He's right behind it. All right. Okay. Thanks. Honey. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That is that is wild. Uh, of course, I've got my 380 on me, but that's not normal, guys. Look at him. He's right there, almost at the hilltop. He's taking it up. Alright, so he, he's just standing there. I wasn't going to stop here. Of course, my plan is to show you the field I just cut. It looks great. But this is wild. I know this is probably not the smartest thing to do, but I can always jump back in here. But I'm getting out. See if he comes toward me. So I just shot and he, he couldn't kind of went running. Well, he took off in the woods, so maybe that scared him. Something's wrong with that one to be out in the daylight. I mean, it's it's 2.30 in the afternoon almost. And uh, I mean, he's, he's walking by my tractor as it's running and then he stops and comes back out. Not cool. I didn't shoot at him. He was too far away and he was toward my neighbor. I just shot him to the ground about 20 feet away. So, uh, interesting. I hope that you could see that on a uh, camera, see him. I mean, the GoPro is so bad at not getting anything. Everything looks a little further away than it is typically. But, uh, yeah, wow. Well, let me go, uh, I'm gonna put the tractor up, get on uh, the four-wheeler, and we'll go up there and take a look at the, uh, at the beautiful land that we just cut. Now, here's our beautiful land that we cut yesterday. And you know, some of you might have seen me always having a sidearm on me. Well, there's a lot of reasons for that, but one of them is something like that right there. You just never know. We're not in bear country or anything like that, but uh, there are plenty of coyotes and they, in a pack, they can be very dangerous. Or one rabid crazed coyote can be dangerous as anything you'd ever want to mess with. What a gorgeous day. Let's go look at that that field we cut. There it is. This is the field that I just got finished cutting and it turned out good. I'm not sure, like I said, I think there might be about 10 acres, maybe 15. I can't remember, I did measure it. I'm curious what some of you guys who do this for a living would have charged for something like that. If you would, in the comments, let me know what I, what I should have charged for this. And uh, if I see some of those comments, I'll let you know what, what we ended up actually charging and what we got for doing it. But it definitely paid for some diesel fuel. There's a turkey going across the driveway. I hope he's careful not to see that coyote. Speaking of the coyote, you know, it did occur to me. Actually, I called and talked to Mrs. Lovely. And uh, she said, you know, it could have been a, a mom with some pups nearby because it is that time of year and that's that's entirely possible uh either that or it was a crazed male coyote but uh in either case he hightailed it i hadn't seen hiding or hair of him since but yeah that's beautiful check out our work
know that our grass is coming in real good that uh, we uh, planted. We brought all this topsoil up here on a previous video to try to prevent all this erosion from that was happening, try to fix it. Now the chickens ate a ton of the seed, but I want you to see what we actually have growing now. There's more back that way. I'll show you that next. All right, here's the grab. And on down here, you'll see plenty more. This, this is all brand new right here. And this is where the mound was originally. Now we have some runoff here that washed it out. I'll have to fix that. But yeah, that took real good. There's more of it. That I'll cut with the swisher. And then all of this right here. We obviously got a lot of rain and we got some runoff before that grass had a chance to take. So I'll have to fill that in and add some seed got to do that for long we're glad that you came along today i know it was probably a long video hopefully you enjoyed some of the music we put in here and for all of you who have come here and maybe seen us for the first time and haven't subscribed yet we are going after a milestone and we would really like to hit it we'd love for you to be a part of that here at the lovely place as we put this homestead together and we continue to create some self-sufficiency so enjoy the rest of your day thanks for for uh, tuning in and we'll see you next time here at the lovely place you take care Thank you.